This afternoon, an Adenta Circuit Court has cautioned organizations processing personal data of citizens to live up to the high standards of care required by law to prevent use of identities for purposes other than that which the individuals have consented to. This caution was issued after the court found right hailing company Bo to have failed to prevent identity theft. A rider who requested a ride surprisingly found his face and name on the app as a responding driver leading to him seeking legal redress. Let's walk you through exactly what the details of the suit are. And so uh, on your screens right now, we see uh, the case title. That's Justice Noah Dade versus Bold Ghana Limited and Bold Holdings OU. And the background is that Mr. Adade in August of 2022 ordered a bold ride on his phone and found himself photographed and details as being the driver to pick himself up. Now, when the ride arrived, it was his own employee, one Peter Walker, who was driving the vehicle. Now, Mr. Walker admitted to stealing the lecturer's identity and successfully registering himself as a driver on the Bolt app. Let's take you through the court's ruling. And what did the court say? That Bolt was required by Ghana's Data Protection Act to undertake a liveliness identity verification check. And the failure to undertake this check amounted to a breach of its duty of care. I'll walk you through the orders which were granted by the circuit court. And amongst many other things, he ordered both to pay 1.9 million cities as compensation and 20,000 cities to the lecturer as cost of his legal fees. Also, the Data Protection Commission is to ensure a forensic audit of both system and database to check the accuracy of the identity of all of its drivers up until March 2024. And then the Data Protection Commission is also to ensure all other ride-hailing platforms in Ghana undergo this particular exercise. Let's bring in uh, Nicholas Lennon Ananajay. He's a lawyer and a lecturer in law and technology. He's joined us uh, via Zoom this afternoon for a quick conversation. Many thanks, counsel. First, fair to say a major disturbing trend of data protection given some legal direction. What's your reading of this decision and possibly the way forward? Okay. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Uh, I think the decision by the Adenta Circuit Court is commendable and very progressive. If you ask me, in the landscape of the data protection regime we are in now, such decisions are long overdue. Because in other countries, you see such decisions being made, not even by the courts, but by the data protection commissions themselves. And so to have somebody go to court and mandate to secure a judgment, not just against any entity, but against such a well-known uh, public entity. I think it is progressive and it must be commended. The judge right. ought to be commended mm. for the decision. We know that the court did give some direction with regards to a forensic audit. Is that satisfactory? Or as a nation, perhaps we need to start looking beyond just these uh, ride-hailing apps because quite recently, some have expressed concerns about receiving unsolicited messages from uh, political candidates, among others. It comes down to the Data Protection Commission because, like you rightly mentioned, the Data Protection Act provides against some of these uh, data breaches, particularly when it comes to unsolicited messages, the Electronic Transactions Act prescribes it. The Data Protection Act prevents and prescribes uh, direct marketing. But what you often see is, particularly in the case of government workers, every now and then you are getting a message soliciting or telling you, you can come for a loan, you can come for insurance, you can come for this. And it all comes down to the Data Protection Commission. The reason being that, in my opinion, their enforcement powers ought to be enhanced because currently the Data Protection Commission's powers to issue sanctions is restricted. They have to rely on the court systems to be able to prosecute or individuals affected have to rely on the court systems to get compensation. Whereas in other places, take example, Nigeria, as recent as last month, Nigeria issued a fine totaling about $220 million against Meta because it found breaches of data on the use of its uh, data subjects. So I think that the Data Protection Commission has to be up and doing. 
they have to be proactive in terms of making sure that these entities, not just the private entities, but even government entities, such as controller and accountant general, agencies that are responsible for taking people's data are complying with the data protection principles in the Data Protection Act. But more importantly, I think we need an amendment to enhance the enforcement powers of the Data Protection Commission so that by itself, it does not only just back, but is capable of imposing sanctions that bite because currently the regime does not allow for the imposition of such hefty fines. You have to resort to the courts. So I think generally, by way of approach, it is long overdue. As a country, we are in a tech era, we are preaching digitalization, and incidental to that is the accumulation of data and the use of data. So we have to get the Data Protection Commission up and working as far as making sure companies and data processors comply with the data protection principles. For speaking to us, that's Nicholas Lennon and Anir J. Speaking to us this afternoon on the latest as we have it, we can bring you some other stories right now.